But would you say though, like if you were to identify or pinpoint the specific emotional trait that you feel most that you have to keep intact, yeah. what would that be? Um, it would be emotional trait. I would say would be uh, discipline. Well, I guess that's not emotional trait, but discipline is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And then um, just know how to reset. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the, you know, the market goes up, up, up and down like this. So your portfolio is going to go up and down like this from time yeah. to time. And then your emotions go up and down like that. So being able to reset after big wins or big losses, like that ability is just so key. And a lot of times it comes from um, not just yourself, but your habits. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what you do, whether you're up, down, or sideways, mm -hmm. you do the same thing every day, right? You, you know, meditate in the morning, drink some coffee, whatever it is that works for you, you yeah. got to figure that out. And so many people enter the trading space thinking it's just about making money. It's really about not losing money, first and foremost, and knowing how to manage your emotions before you even get into trying to make the big trades. You know what I mean? What's going on, everybody? So we are back for another episode of Finding Your Niche with Niche. Right now, y'all, I'm so excited, okay? Because when it comes to making money or figuring out how you can expand your legacy, I have the right person in front of me to do that. One of two, Koi is in the building from yes. Cheat Code. Yes, ma'am. Cheat Code it. Algo. Um, first of all, thank you so much for being on the show. Definitely. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, I'm so excited. So basically, um, for people who don't, already know who you are which you guys by the way are like making some noise <laughs> like for real y'all are really starting to pick up momentum um yeah. with your software and stuff like mm -hmm. that but for people who don't know what cheat code is essentially is it like a is an algorithm that you guys created yeah. to help people navigate the market right yeah, to yeah. for stocks and options but i'll let you explain it better yeah so uh pretty much uh you know we had a community of, of people who are traders right or, or wanting to learn how to trade and invest in the market and, uh, you know, what we find is that a lot of people, they want to start trading, they want to start making money, but a lot of the nuances of like reading charts is complicated, right? You see people with day traders, they have lines everywhere, they got all these things going on in their charts and people find it complicated. So what we did was we simplified it down into a software that basically makes everything, basically turns into like almost like a GPS for the stock market, right? It tells you when to go, when to slow down, when to get out of a trade, when to sell, things yeah. like that. Um, so, yeah, it basically breaks it down very easily, very simply. And yeah. So, yeah, and I think, well, what you guys were able to do, first of all, is, you know, pretty innovative and unique in its own right. Um, but can you talk to me a little bit about the process? Because right now, yeah. you know, the work, the bulk of the work is done. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like autopilot at this point to yeah. some degree. Can you talk about the initial thoughts when it came to creating the software? Yeah, I mean, so the initial thought was honestly, like, we had a small community. It was like, you know, it started out with 16 people in a group chat about three years ago, just teaching them how to trade. And then it grew from 16 to 100, 100 to 200. And um, my thought process was just, I need to find a way to not have to keep repeating myself all the time. Because I had to keep teaching new people all the time. And I'm like, listen, you know, let me just find a way to automate that. Yeah. Uh, and so I started to play around with just the, the foundation. COVID had just happened, so we're mm -hmm. locked in the house anyway. And uh, I was like, you know what, let me just go ahead. So, so I started, you know, tinkering around with some stuff, came up with a very basic version of what we have today, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of simplified my strategy so that other people could follow it. And, you know, just from their feedback, everybody was like, you know, super excited, started making more money. And so, you know, they start asking for new, different features and things of that nature. And I started adding on to it. And then eventually we got the version we have today, which is V4, the fourth version. And we're actually coming out with a new version next month, which is uh, Chico Pro, much more, you know, just, robust and Whoa. It's really exciting. Yeah. okay so you got tired of teaching you got tired of repeating yourself actually yeah. that's actually a good interesting answer i yeah. think too because when you actually do that you know it sounds like easier said than done like i just want to stop teaching so let me figure this out yeah. but you know there's a lot of work that goes into creating something so robust as what you've already you guys have already been able to implement and stuff yeah. like that can you kind of talk about the actual process of creating the algorithm and maybe what pitfalls you guys ran into? Yeah, um, so the actual process started with like me just, like I said, tinkering around. Uh, I had to learn a, a coding language, which is pretty a, a unique coding language to, to the trading world, right? Um, yeah. And so I started playing around with that. My dad is a programmer, so I was able to kind of pick up some things over the years from him. Um, and yeah, just so just started learning different codes, seeing what different things did, um, adding things, taking things away. 
And uh, the biggest process was when people started asking for stuff that was out of my wheelhouse, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I had to go find developers. Yeah. And when I started putting it together, a team of developers to take it to the next level, mm -hmm. it's a process of learning people, right? Which I think applies to all businesses because you end up getting into spaces where you don't, you don't know what you don't know, right? So you got people who start taking advantage of you, running up the check on you, right? Yep. Uh, for doing things that would take an hour to do, they start trying to charge eight hours for it. <laughs> and so that was a big process. We, we spent like, you know, almost $200,000 just in the learning process of that, wow. right? Trying to get it into its own app and like all types of stuff. Um, so that's still been a process now that we're still working through. Yeah, um, it's trying yeah. to figure out how, how, you, how to not get finesse. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, crazy yeah. because... That's the thing is when you get money and people at least know that you have, you know, a certain amount of money, so to speak, yeah. people feel like they can kind of leverage oh, that yeah. oh, and yeah. play games. So it's yeah. like figuring out, you know, who's doing honest work, you know, yeah. and who's not has been like the hardest part. Yeah. What would have you guys found, I guess, with the algorithm itself to be the most rewarding? The most rewarding thing is, is honestly seeing people like go from just getting into the space, not knowing anything at all, right, to you know, coming to some classes, learning things, and then utilizing the hour to actually start making money. So like our group, we have a big group chat now. It's about 18,000 people in the group chat, but it's still very like family oriented. Like everybody helps each other. And to watch people, you know, I see names come in and they're like asking questions, like really basic questions. Yeah. And like three months later, they're trading, they're helping other people, they're teaching other people, they're making money, they're posting in the profits chat. I think like that's been the most rewarding thing. Um, yeah. Just to kind of like, because our culture has been so far behind the ball for so long, right? Uh, when it comes to this type of space, mm -hmm. um, you know, other demographics have had this type of stuff for a long time. Institutions have, have tools like this. And so just to watch us kind of come in, you know, from all different backgrounds, you know, I got a felony background. Other people in our community got felony mm -hmm. backgrounds. Um, their op other opportunities aren't available to them and to watch them like change their life around with stuff like this or, people who have PhDs and, and surgeons and things like that, but right. they now find it more fulfilling to trade than doing their actual, yeah, actual you know, career, career field. Yeah. Yeah. School, yeah. I think it's really cool too, because essentially what you guys are doing is moving the needle when it comes to changing the narrative, yeah. um, especially for our community and our culture and the black experience, as far as like becoming financially free, yeah. essentially is the name of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. How does it feel to have created something that actually implements change for the culture? It was amazing. I mean, you know, it's just, it's not something that uh, I, I expected, you mm -hmm. know, to, to be a thing um, before. It just kind of, you know, when they say like when things, when the right idea comes at the right time or when it's God's plan or any yeah. of those type of conversations, it just, it just fits, you know what I mean? So it feels good. It feels cool. And for people who are kind of new, because I'm kind of novice, like yeah. I don't really trade, but I'm very interested in the, in this space. My husband trade and I tell yeah. him like, it's so interesting because it's like one of the only jobs that you, where you can go to work and lose money, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, to speak. It's like, true. you know, you can put in hours and still lose money. Yeah. But can you kind of speak to the fact of like the actual mental and emotional toll that it can take on you if you don't know what you're doing? Oh, man. I mean, I think 90% of the people out there knows exactly what that feels like because most people enter into the space yeah. without knowing because it's so there's such a low barrier to entry mm -hmm. that people just enter you know they'll buy stocks because somebody told them to they'll buy dogecoin they'll buy gamestop and they'll find themselves on the losing end of it mm -hmm. um and it just it's a terrible feeling a lot of people quit and give up and things of that nature even as traders we all have bad days bad weeks bad months etc cetera, etc cetera. and i tell people all the time like trading is actually mostly a, my, a mental game, right? All we're doing is clicking the right button at the right time or the wrong button at the wrong time. And you click the right button at the right time, you make money. You click the wrong button at the wrong time, you lose money, right? So if you're not clicking the right buttons, you get into a period where you just keep clicking the wrong button at the wrong time, <laughs> it can mess you up, yeah. right? But it's all about knowing how to manage the emotion because once you have the emotions managed, you can actually execute a, a strategy consistently mm -hmm. and find those con those consistent wins and not panic when you're down or get overly excited when you're up. Because the other part is you'll make some big, you make big money, make thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars in a day, and you're like, oh, I'm a genius, I know everything. Yeah. And then you don't you don't want to learn anything else. You don't want to, you know, you start making bad trades because mm -hmm. you you know you think you're the best thing in the world. So it's all about emotional management, you know. Yeah. What was your last time you had to check yourself where you felt like I'm getting too emotional on this trade or maybe your mm. most biggest recent loss? 
Uh, my most biggest loss was uh, on uh, Alibaba. So okay. Alibaba, you know, I was expecting the Chinese companies to do really well over, you know, early in the year, um, simply because, you know, we had, they had a, a whole lot going on with their, um, you know, their tech companies and, and there's just a lot at play for them. So I'm, I'm taking Alibaba as a trade and I put in, I think about, about probably about like $18,000 or something like that. And, um, and I made, so that, I'm sorry, I messed up your other. So that number is kind of big to me. Is that oh, still yeah. a big number to you? No, nah, not at all. I mean, like not not now. Right? Okay, it not was now. Before, but yeah, I mean, you know. Before. So you're not really thinking. It, it's not an emotional thing for you to be able to like eighteen thousand. No, a train. Okay. but see, the, the the bad part was it went up to about fifty or sixty, and okay. then I lost it, <laughs> and then I lost most of it, right? So when it came back down, I took some profit on the way up, which I should have taken more profit off, off the table. Uh, but uh, I ended up, you know, losing, you know, the 60, coming from 60 all the way back down to about 15, and I cut it 15. Uh, but it's like, you know, that's $60,000. I could have just taken it off the table. Yeah. Um, but then on the flip side of that, you know, we did um, $10,000 to $175,000 um, with, with the trade with me, me and Jehu. Okay. Uh, and we did it with, like, a whole Instagram, you know, like, watching, because I told everybody I was going to get into this trade. <laughs> And it was cool because it was like it tied into this other YouTube video we did about um, Lucid, which is a new EV company. Okay. And we made one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in, 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 you know, just that one trade over the period of like two months. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was like, oh man, we're good. You know, we got you know that was a hell of a trade. You know, we were riding the high of the trade, and we uh, we kind of had to check ourselves and like just let it be for a little bit because again, after a trade like that, yeah, first thing you want to do is go take that one seventy-five, go put it somewhere else. You know. So, yeah. yeah, it just kind of works both ways. You know, you got to check your, check your emotions on both what sides. Do you, what would you say, though? Like, if you were to identify or pinpoint the specific emotional trait that you feel most that you have to keep intact, yeah. what would that be? Um, it would be, emotional trait, I would say, would be uh, discipline. Well, I guess that's not emotional trait, but discipline is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And then um, just know how to reset. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the, you know, the market goes up, up, up and down like this, so your portfolio is gonna go up and down like this from time yeah. to time, and then your emotions go up and down like that. So being able to reset after big wins or big losses, like that ability is just so key. And a lot of times it comes from um, not just yourself, but your habits, you know what I'm saying? Like no matter what you do, if, whether you're up, down, or sideways, mm -hmm. you do the same thing every day, right? You you know, meditate in the morning, drink some coffee, whatever it is that works for you, you yeah. gotta figure that out. And so many people enter the trading space thinking it's just about making money. It's really about not losing money first and foremost and knowing how to manage your emotions before you even get into trying to make the big trades. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. and I think that's so important. How long did it learn how long did it take for you to learn that? The, that it's all about emotions. And, and yeah. have, would you say you've mastered it to some degree or? Uh, yeah, I got it down pretty well now. I mean, it's always work to do, right? Okay. Uh, but you know, I think the, the best way you learn is through teaching others. And so because I have to constantly teach other people that it's, mm -hmm. it's a constant self reminder that I got to check myself too, right? Because yeah. I'm not immune from it. Especially when, you know, a lot of people follow me and things like that. Like I'm always worried about, you know, if I say like, this is the trade I'm taking, is, if it go, goes south, people following it right you know i gotta check my own emotions right um and same thing to the to the good side you know people just they shower you with praises when you win you gotta right. check check the other side so uh it's been a long process it's been i would say i really started started click for me at about year eight right i uh, started trading heavy in 2012 when i came home from so i did uh three years in prison from uh 2000 and nine to 2012 mm -hmm. came home in 2012 and you know was trying to figure it out right couldn't make a whole lot of money in construction i was making like seven dollars an hour in construction mm -hmm. started trading heavy uh from the porta potties on my lunch break you know what i mean i'm like on wow. my phone trading went you know started making money from that and you know quit my regular job and went all the way into trading but when that's your only source of income mm -hmm. It's very emotional. Yeah. Like I got a, a, a brand new child on the way, you know, I got wow. no other source of income. I'm trading like tax refund checks. I'm yeah. trading student refund checks. And when you go to zero with something like that, you learn like real quick, like, damn, <laughs> you know, I got to do something different next right. time. Right. And so I was just constantly going back and forth. So well, I really, it really clicked for me in 2018 when the crypto market crashed. 
um, during the crypto market boom, I went from 5,000 to 200 and like 20 something thousand. And I lost $200,000 in, in one night, Ooh. like a single night. Cause I was over leveraged, oh my God. high risk and the market tanked and I lost it damn near all in one night. And I what did like, you go man. home and do? Yeah, damn near cry, man. <laughs> like I was, I was sick. I'm not gonna lie to you. And, and at the time I had five uh, real estate projects going. So I was oh flipping houses God. and a lot of that money was, you know, related to, to that. I was like, you know, I was depending on that because my actual construction projects, you know, went over budget on. So I'm like, okay, at least I got that money yeah. in the account. I can always transfer over. And then when that went south, I'm like, damn, man, oh my like, gosh. I'm screwed. And then like, you know, just all trickled downhill. So yeah, yeah, I was sick. I was <laughs> contemplating all types of things. Like, you know, not, not anything harmful to myself, but I was like, you know, damn, I got to do something to get this money. Yeah, man, I, gotta, you know, I kind of want to unpack that a little bit because there's yeah. a lot of people that are kind of still in that space somewhat yeah. of lack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're in a predicament where their lifestyle is not what they want it to be. Um, they're not necessarily making the money that they want to make. How what was I guess maybe was there an isolated moment for you, you know, coming out of prison, doing the time, figuring out, you know, trying to not become a product of your environment. Mm -hmm. What was it that clicked for you that decided? Because this is something I'm realizing, too, is like, I don't like this feeling. I don't like yeah. Oh, yeah. being broke. I don't like having lack. So, like, what was that moment for you? Um, so with lack, I've always been entrepreneurial, which is how I ended up in the situation in the first place, right? Okay. So it was, I always knew that I had to do something. But I, when I was a kid, I was doing lawn mowing. I had my lawn mowing business. I put flyers out. I was doing shuffling snow. I was always doing something. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, and so I always knew I wanted something more. Um, but it clicked for me when I realized that, you know, coming out of that situation, it's like I, I, I was fortunate enough to deal with a lot of older individuals who had were a little bit more wise mm. right and gave me a little bit more game than you know other people that were around yeah and so you know they just would always say stuff to me like man young you know if i knew what i know now at your age mm -hmm. man i'd be i'd be bill gates da, 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 da. and i'm like man well tell me what you know now right. though, so i know it you right. know what Put I mean? me on game. yeah exactly like if it's if it's like that let me know so mm -hmm. just kind of listening to them i learned a lot you know, just about the possibilities. First off, about our culture. Mm -hmm. That was a big shift because I learned more about our culture in prison than I did in the school system, right? Wow. Which was which was major for me. When I realized, you know, I thought I went to a pretty good school system. It was even though it was predominantly white, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, or predominantly non, you know, not black. Yeah. Um, you know, they claim to be a great school system. So I'm like, okay. Why am I learning about, you know, the move bombing in Philadelphia? Like, why am I learning about that in prison? Mm. I didn't know America bombed its own citizens at one point, which was black people, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, all the stuff that happened. I didn't know anything about Tulsa, Oklahoma. I didn't know anything about African history, right? Mm -hmm. I learned more about that when I was incarcerated then. So when I started realizing, I said, man, you know, there's a reason for that. You know, they want us to be at the bottom for a reason because knowing our culture, knowing our history, it's powerful. Yeah. And uh, and then so I learned that and I learned even more financial literacy in prison than I did in the school system. You know, it was a it was a guy from New York who, um, you know, he was locked up for 18 years and he's the one who taught me about credit. You know wow. what I mean? And like how to set up credit and how to manage your credit and things of that nature. I didn't learn that in the school system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So once um i started to learn all these things that opened my eyes i started putting plans together when i come home i'm gonna do this i'm gonna open this business i'm gonna set all this stuff up and um and so when i came home you know it was obviously a lot harder than i thought it was when i was in there but yeah yeah that's what, what clicked for me i was like you know i can't go the route that i was going before i gotta find a different route and it just so happened that my dad introduced me to trading when i was younger um or introduced me to stocks in general okay and um even though I didn't, you know, I picked it up at that time, but I didn't really pay much attention mm -hmm. to it. Uh, when I came home, I was like, okay, let me see what that's talking about, you know? And yeah. That was, that was it. I think another really cool thing about it and about you guys' story is like what you just kind of mentioned. Like it mm -hmm. wasn't an initial like innate thing that you just always grew up wanting to do, yeah. trade and be in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a really specific moment in time that you kind of like were disciplined, the emotional thing that you talked about, mm -hmm. where you were pretty steadfast on, I want to create this software, I want to create this system. Can you kind of explain how it actually works, like the technical side to the algorithm? Yeah, for sure. Um, so basically what it does is there's certain things that you can't really identify in just by looking at a stock chart, right? Okay. You could tell the price, what the price going up and down, et cetera. But 
um, you can't really tell things like volatility. And volatility is how we make money in the market. Volatility is how, how, how uh, violent, I guess, or how strong a stock moves up and down in a particular time. Okay. And so what it does is it tracks the volatility from a period from the period period of um, past like 14 to 21 days. Mm -hmm. And it will calculate that and say, OK, there's an increase in volatility going on right now. And that increase is uh, in volatility is heading in an upward direction or a downward direction. OK. And then it will plot that out as a buy signal um, and a trend cloud We call it a trend cloud. Right. And that trend cloud basically gives you a green. Uh, a green like shadow and that shadow will be either points up or it points down. Okay. And if it's pointing down, it's red. If it's pointing up, it's green. And as it's pointing up and it's green, it's time to go. As you get your little mm -hmm. yellow candles, the yellow candles tell you it's time to slow down. It might be, you know, that uptrend may be coming to an end. And then as it starts coming down, it gives you the red, you know, cloud and the cell signal. Yeah. So it basically breaks it down to red, green and yellow. Just like a traffic light, you know what I mean? Wow, okay, yeah. I love that how you guys simplified that. Now, so it doesn't trade for you. You still mm. there's still an element of free will, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People <laughs> people been asking for that for the long, but I refuse to do it. Why? Because it's like I don't want anybody to, you know. There's no magic pill, mm. right? There's no like, if there's something out there, and there are trading bots out there, but the, the level of success is 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 minimal. Mm -hmm. Your success, if you really want true wealth in this environment, you have to master the skill. And so, you know, it. we call it the cheat code. It is a cheat code to it, right? But that you can't skip the learning process. Mm. And so I'm more and more, uh, you know, steadfast on our community in particular, mastering the skill, because that skill you can pass down to your children, your children's children. My dad introduced me to stocks. That was him passing down some type of information that he got from somewhere else. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, that's life changing. So you pass it down and, and that's generational wealth. The generational wealth is information. It's not the, you know, necessarily the assets, the physical assets you pass down because you could pass down a house, a portfolio. You can pass down anything to your kids. If they're not educated properly, they're going to lose it. Mm. You know, they're going to, you know, we know all those stories of people who got inherited a bunch of money and they blew it. Yep. People hit the lottery all the time and they blow it. Yeah. If they have financial literacy, you can give them a hundred dollars, and you know they'll be able to find their success because they have the information and the skills. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm like, I'm like, we're not doing auto trading. You know? Yeah, I think um, that's interesting too because essentially, so what you guys provide in algorithm is basically indicators, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, people still have the choice of whether or not to do something, but. Yep. The indicators, are they usually pretty spot on? Yeah. So the thing is, if you just follow the buy and sell signals, the, you don't just follow, the, you don't just buy when it says buy, sell when it says sell, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's certain filters that you have to look through. So there's three sets of indicators. So when you get a buy that meets certain conditions with the other two indicators, then you have a high probability of entering that trade and being successful. Now, what will happen is even if you just follow the buy and sell signals, you will be right more times than you're wrong right okay and so even in, and even when you are wrong um or even when the trade does go south it's because it gives you a sell signal the moment that trade turns against you your losses are very minimal because you know you're not sitting there hoping what a lot of people do is they'll get into a trade and be like oh you know i'm just gonna hold on to it. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna yeah. close my portfolio and i'm not gonna look at it it's gonna come back <laughs> right. And then the portfolio just keeps going down and down and down. And so, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so what happens is when you get the sell signal, it just tells you to cut your losses early, you know, because when it's time to buy again, it's going to tell you it's time to buy again. And then you can get back in. You don't just want to sit there and hold on to something mm -hmm. with your eyes closed, thinking that, you know, you're using hope as a strategy and hope right. as a strategy never works in the market. So um, that's that's how it works. You know, you got to filter it out when you have we, we call it the four for four confirmation. When you have all four indicators lining up, telling you, you know, it's time to go, then you go and you have a high probability of success like that. Wow. I love that, too. Yeah. And it kind of just reminds me of your one of the points that you made earlier when you were saying, like, the point of trading is to not lose. It's to lose the least amount of money exactly. as possible. You want to win more than you lose. Right. You know and I mean? so with that being said, you've been able to win yeah. a lot more yeah. than you've lost. Yeah. And so. Can you speak to that element of like, oh, we up now, like actual, the actual process of, you know, becoming wealthy mm -hmm. and making the money. What is the first thing that you go and buy? Go and buy? Yes. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Man, I don't even know. Honestly, I, we've reinvested so much back into the company, honestly. Like, we don't really, you know, 
and that's one thing that we, I told my partner, like uh, my business partner, Jay, like um, this year, like we got to do a better job of like living the lifestyle that we, we actually want because we've been so focused on work and like reinvesting into different things. We, we've reinvested back into like kids products, like, you know, physical. Um, that's actually what we're doing out here in the ATL, by the way. We're okay. actually having a conversation about that, but um, you know, flash cards and kids games and you know, all types of other stuff that we've been doing. We've just been expanding the company mm -hmm. um, that we just haven't really been, done a great job. We haven't bought any Lambos, anything <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Uh, so we'll probably do something like that this year. But ultimately, just the freedom to travel, mm -hmm. um, the freedom to like not have to answer to anybody else has been the most fulfilling thing. Um, but the process of it, you know, of getting wealthy to me has always been skill sets, you know, like, I believe that your the value of your bank account or your portfolio, whatever you want to call it, is a direct correlation to your skill sets in life, right? So there's certain high value skill sets that you you want to develop okay. in order to become wealthy. <clears throat> Things like trading or investing is a skill set, right? The higher your value and in, in the, the more skills that you have in that, that space, the more capacity you have to build wealth. Okay. Entrepreneurialism, right? Being an entrepreneur is a skill set. Learning how to build funnels, learning how to, you know, market your product, whatever it may be. Um, conversation podcasting is a skill set, right? Like, you know, the better you are at that, the more you're able to market and build, a, uh, you know, podcasts. It's a high value skill set, especially today. You're able to build an audience, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all these things are skill sets. And the more, uh, the, the higher the value that you have in that space, the higher your ability to make wealth for yourself. And so for us, it was obviously trading and investing, but mm -hmm. it's also entrepreneurialism, right? Because we could create the product, but if we can't tell people about it and get it out there, market it, deal with customers and Back. build systems and processes, we're not going to make that. And we make a, a good amount of money from our products and services, a lot of money from our products and services, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if we didn't have the skill set of being able to serve our customers properly, then we wouldn't find that success either. So, yeah. Yeah. So obviously you guys have pick up, picked up momentum, um, being able to kind of, you know, trying to go out and do more things now, enjoy the lifestyle that he's been able to provide you. What would you say to people though? Because it's called the cheat code for a reason. You kind of explain the algorithm, the way mm -hmm. that it works. What do you say to the people that are like, I don't think that's cool. You shouldn't do an algorithm. Why don't you just learn how to trade naturally? I mean, I say say what you want to say. I mean, you know, um, th there are people like that. There's always going to be people who have something negative to say all the time, um, and more power to them. I mean, I, I'm a big believer, whether it's trading, whether it's you know, same thing with like religion, spirituality, relationships. Do what works for you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like whatever works for you works for you, and for what works for us has been, you know, the things that we've been able to build for the community that we've been able to build it for. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say, you know. Is there an actual what? end game? Like, I guess when it comes to looking at an, goals, right? Mm -hmm. What is the actual goal for Cheat Code? So the actual goal for Cheat Code is to build a company that we can actually take public onto the stock market because there's only six publicly traded companies out there that are, you know, black founded companies. Um, Urban One being one of them. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, you know, Kathy Hughes and them, yeah. right? Um, but there's not a whole lot of black owned publicly traded companies. And so we really want to break that barrier for the younger dem demographic. Um, let people know that like, yo, you can build a company, you can take it public. And that's where the money really is. You know, if you think about all the richest people in the world, the wealthiest people in the world, they all own large amounts of publicly traded companies, whether it's their own, like Elon Musk mm -hmm. owns majority of Tesla. I mean, not majority of Tesla, but he owns a lot of Tesla shares. Yeah. And so as Tesla stock goes up, so does his net worth, which is why he's the richest person in the world. Wow. Um, Bernard Arnault with Louis Vuitton brands, right? You, every time you go out there and buy a Louis Vuitton purse, Gucci purse, whatever it may be, stock just his stock goes up. And now his, you know what I'm saying, his wealth yeah. goes up. Um, he, uh, Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook, Warren Buffett with Berkshire Hathaway. And so, you know, our thing is, you know, we have a lot of black uh, companies that are very successful, well put together. Um, and as we've now broken this barrier in black entrepreneurialism in today's gen generation, mm -hmm. you know, we now are really, we're really catching the wave, right? Yeah. You know, we went from, you know, um, like doing service-based businesses, you know, where it's one entrepreneur managing their business, like nail shops, hair mm -hmm. shops, barber shops, clothing brands, things of that nature. 
um, to you know now we're really dominating the online space and really you know dealing with online space media, yeah. uh, things of that nature. And so as we start building media companies, as we start building online businesses and, and social platforms and things of that nature, um, you know I really want to start seeing a lot of us build those companies to scale mm -hmm. and take them public uh, and and be able to actually build real you know massive companies you know yeah I mean? so, that's a pretty lofty goal but yeah. it's lofty but it's possible yeah definitely right definitely. so can you talk about your mindset as far as that like being goal oriented yeah. and being able to believe in yourself and have the capacity and the aptitude to actually accomplish these things definitely. how did you get to that point oh i think i've always been like that i mean you know People, I don't know if you do astrology or anything, but they always say, like, you know, Leo's, right? We always I'm a Leo. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Wait, where's your birthday? Let's see what kind of Leo you are. August 8th, man. I'm a true okay, Leo. Okay, you're yeah, okay, you're August Leo. Okay. You're July Leo? No, I'm an August 20th. Okay, cool. Okay, bad, bad, bad. That's yeah. tight. Now, that's dope. So, yeah, you know, we, we always have a confidence in what we do, you know. Um, and uh, so I always looked at it like if somebody else can do it, mm -hmm. there's no reason why I can't do it, right? And right. so as I'm trading, this is actually came to me in, like, I think, like, 2014. I was trading, like penny stocks like weed company penny stocks at the time <laughs> and i'm like oh how are all these these like companies they don't even have a revenue yeah yet they're publicly traded you know what i mean and they're coming onto the market with no revenue just goals mm -hmm. and i'm sitting here trading their cup their stock i'm looking through all their stuff and i'm like why can't i have a company that's on the market mm. so i started to learn you know reverse engineer from there what do you need to go public you know whether it's on the over-the-counter market on the nasdaq or whatever it may be and then just start reverse engineering from there and i think that to me, that's always the goal for anything that you're trying to accomplish. You know, start with your goal, with whatever your goal or your dream is and reverse engineer it. Make steps, logical steps to get to that point. Because if other people can do it, there's no reason why you can as well. Right, right? because this, it already shows that it can be done, it can be right? Done, yeah. It can be done. So figuring out how to work your way backwards. I think yeah. one way that you've been able to work your way forwards also with business and being successful in business is partnering with the right people. Yeah, definitely. So can major. you speak to... Working with Jay and how you guys are compatible in business and how mm -hmm. you've been able to kind of navigate that relationship. Yeah, I mean, so with me and Jay, it's uh, it's interesting because like we have this like, um, we have like we we have this same personality at different times. Okay. So what I mean by that is like I'll be you know more outgoing or more you know um, front facing when it's time like when it's and we know when that is like yeah. when it's something like the conversation we have right now about trading and stuff like that or. The business and things like that like i'm typically want to be more front facing with that okay but i'm also super introverted right and so really like, oh super introvert like which is the opposite of what most people think right so i'm only you know it's only when i'm like dealing with people that like i relate to or we're talking about something that has like i feel like has value mm -hmm. um but like if it's like just general out you know going out for the night i don't do clubs i don't do part like parties like that i do like the small social gatherings yeah jay on the other hand you get him in front of a crowd like you know <laughs> into like a party or something and he's turned up really? like he's a whole different beast so can he like, dance oh yeah he dances like mug i don't dance but he does so, you okay know what I mean? yeah he, he you do the stuff. money dance yeah, you know what I mean? I, I chill. I do my thing, you know? A little two-step now and then. Okay. You know I mean? um, but, yeah, so like we swap, you know, extrovert, introvert when the time is right. Mm -hmm. He's more, um, you know, organized. I'm more vision-oriented. So, like, I handle the vision side. He handles, like, more, like, the execution back-end stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just works that way, you know what I mean, for us. And so it's been a learning process, too, um, of learning how to, like, really work with somebody else and, and you know, yeah. take because it's actually my first time dealing with a partner in the business, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, but then also on the other end of like partnering with other people like outside of our company, it's also been really successful for us as well, right? Okay. Like um, we did like, you know, we partnered with uh, EYO um, for, for some stuff, partnered with 19 Keys for yeah. some stuff. These are people who have a skill set and build an audience and really bring a value to a community, a larger community and like you know they feel like a lot of other spots that i don't i'm not i don't like to do social media as much you know what i mean i don't like to do the social media content as much you know what i mean oh, you better you got to change that huh? yeah i mean i i just i never <laughs> to was a trying degree, to, to a degree yeah. yeah it's like i wasn't trying to be anybody's like social media influencer <laughs> nothing like that but you know i've kind of been forced to because yeah. like people want to see more from us and sure so, yeah we've been doing that but can you talk about that too because a lot of people are like how did you get that? How did you get that opportunity? How did you get in that room? Can you talk about the actual, <laughs> is it? Cause I feel like yeah. that's a skill. Like how yeah. are you on these platforms to yeah. like 
you know, be in the same space as 19 Keys and earn your leisure? Like, how did yeah. those opportunities come about? It's, it's, it's really interesting, man. That story is, is, is hella interesting. So it started out when we I was, again, kind of like the, the, going back to the partnership. Yeah. I was in the, in the house coding the program and, you know, getting the, the, the testing the version with the community. And Jay was like, man, we need to get this out to more people. So he started to like DM everybody. I mean, this guy DMs Walker Flocker. Our first conversation was with Walker Flocker. Wow. And we got on a Zoom call with Walker and like was pitching him on Cheat Code and all this other stuff. And then we DM like, Jay DM Michelle Obama, like literally DM Michelle Obama because he, you know, she had like a, a program with like yeah. education. He DM Michelle Obama, he DM uh, EYL, he DM like everybody just DM, DM, yeah. DM. And it was just a game of numbers. And then eventually, you know, people started responding. Um, you know, uh, Mike McDonald from EYL, he responded. We got on a call with him. He, he got us in front of Trent Rashad. Actually, on my daughter's birthday, my, my daughter was being born. My girl was in labor, right, in the house. We were having a home birth. And that was the same day that I took the call with EYL, right? And I was like, yo, I told her, I was like, hey, she's in labor. Whoa. I'm like, hey, man, you know, Troy Rashad, want to get on this call? <laughs> she's like, go take the call, go take the call. So, like, I'm, I'm in the other room. On Zoom with Troy Rashad, it's actually my um, Jehu's birthday also. Oh my God! So we had a lot going on, but we took that call. That was the first time we got on a call with them. And then um, later on in Clubhouse, I was doing a lot on Clubhouse, and uh, one of their guys, uh, Jamal, he he saw us on Clubhouse and then brought the conversation back. He didn't even know we had already talked to them, but he was like, "Hey man, I really want to get you on the podcast." And yeah. Then, he brought it back, and it just so happened that Troy Rashad remembered the conversation we had the first time. He's mm -hmm. like, "Yo, you the guy that was having a baby when we had talked." <laughs> Yeah, man. Whoa, what a day. Yeah, that was, a, that was quite a time. So um, That's wild. Yeah, it's just about putting it out. It's about have, bringing value to people, though. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, we... Because everybody wants yeah. to get put on automatically. Yeah, exactly. But what are you bringing to the table? What are table? you bringing to the table? And so it's always about having something that brings some value to other people. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, getting in those rooms. I think a lot of people are better at getting in rooms than, than we are, actually. I see a lot of... Um, you know, my, actually, a girl, she's out here in Atlanta. Shout out to Alyssa. Uh, level up Alyssa. She's okay. She's making beast. some moves. Man, what? She knows how to get in the room. She's always like every time <laughs> I see her on social, she in the room with somebody. Somebody. You know what I mean? So um, it's just about you know I guess you know putting putting your face out there, um, bringing value to other people, and shooting your shot. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Are you ever afraid of like? Is there anything right now today where it's like okay, I need to work through that? Like an element of fear when it comes to your product and service. Um, product or service fear. Um, yeah, I mean, so when we first started even, like, uh, we got on with EYL, it brought a ton of traffic. Yeah. And it was really hard to deal with that amount of customers at one time. And so the customer experience wasn't the, the greatest when we first kind of, you know, got going. So we had to work through a lot of those things. And so now I think it's the same type of thing. It's always about making sure that we're like over delivering mm -hmm. right and that people will find success with the tools that we bring especially when it comes to money and monetizing yeah and there's always also the fear of like you know um like government right like who knows you know if sec issues or whatever it may be we've worked we have a legal team we work through those type of things mm -hmm. but i guess when you're in this space and a minority and look the way we look it's like i always think about it like you know, historically, we've always had issues like that, you know what I mean, where they've, maybe not the SEC in particular, but like government. Right, they just right? won't let us be great. Won't let us be great, right? <laughs> so it's always that type of thing, I think. Um, but I mean, overall, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. We focus a lot on education. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just want to see more of us win. So, I mean, I don't really, it's not really much I can think of as far as that goes. Yeah. Okay, fill in the blank to this sentence. Mm -hmm. um, I trade because... I want to make money. I mean, trade because I don't want to work for somebody else. Trade because I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be poor. I mean, it's a million. It's all, yeah, it's all just <laughs> want to make money, man. I mean, just think about, like, how great is it that I can sit here from my phone? Like, literally, mm -hmm. I can sit here on my phone and, like, click some buttons and make some money, right? Like, That's dope. I mean, it just doesn't get better than that. When you and Once you start realizing that, it's like, man, what? Why would I do anything else? Yeah, what are we doing? Right? Yeah, what why are we, would I do anything else? <laughs> why like, would I do anything else? Yeah, like what? That's so funny. Okay, so let's... Okay, biggest day... Fill in this blank, too. I can't remember the question, so mm. let me think. It's... Biggest day in the market was... My biggest day in the market... 
uh, gain wise in one day was one hundred and forty thousand dollars. I did uh, a put, which is betting on the stock to come down on Moderna. Uh, Moderna was running up really, really high. I actually put it on my, my Instagram as well. If you go through my stories on I think it's under my trades highlight, mm -hmm. you'll see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I got the cheat code, got the signal, yellow candle outside the reversal band. And I was like, you know what? I got some puts on it. I put, I put like 30 grand on puts and went up about four or 500%, made $140,000. That was in one single day and one single trade. The $175,000 trade with uh, Lucid was over a period of days. Um, but that was my biggest day on Moderna. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was a hell of a trade. But my biggest trade to the downside was that $200,000 a day when I lost 200000 on crypto, so it's all relative, you know what I mean? God, so, yeah. Oh my God, it's so yeah. much like, that just is giving me like, not oh, yeah. anxiety, but it's just like, it, I guess that would just rev me up. Like yeah. you have to be a special kind of person to be able to, <laughs> <laughs> to do and deal with those kind of numbers. Yeah. Okay, favorite company to trade? Favorite company to trade is, well, my favorite company to invest in is Plug Power. Um, my favorite company to trade would be uh, I would say probably Tesla. Tesla's a pretty good good stock to trade once you get it figured out. Um, but yeah, favorite company to invest in is Plug Power, hands down. Plug Power, for everybody out there who's listening, Plug Power, when, when I told you I first got into trading, I was in the penny stocks, mm -hmm. I bought Plug Power when it was 15 cents. And um, I put my, me and my, my ex at the time, you know, my son's mom, I had, I convinced her to give me her like half her student refund check. <laughs> And so I took like half her student refund check for two grand, took my student refund check for two grand, put it in plug power at 15 cents. I got, I think it was like 36,000, 30, wow. 36, 36, and some change shares of plug power. And the CEO was oh very calm. I mean, he was so confident in his product. He was like, you know what, take my salary for the next two years and just pay me in stock options because if you guys don't believe in the company, I do. And what they do is they do hydrogen fuel cells for um, industrial forklifts uh, and, and, and warehouses and things like that. That yeah. was a core product, which cuts down a lot of time on plugging up a forklift. You know, and if you imagine a, a, a warehouse like Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon is running 24-7. So yep. if, you're, if your forklifts are down for eight hours a day, it's a large cost. So they save companies like that a lot of money on warehousing. And, uh, and then now they're doing cars, they're doing long range uh, refrigeration vehicles, mm -hmm. you know, to get food from one place to another, stuff like that. So, um, and they've just built the hydrogen infrastructure. So everybody knows we're going towards clean energy. Plug Power does, is I think it's gonna be a major player in that space. And long story short, Plug Power went from 15 cents to um, 40 cents. I flipped that wow. money, sold it, gave my, you know, told my, my ex, I was like, yo man, like, Told you, man. I got this. You know what I mean? Like, you know, made I made like ten thousand. I think it was, went to four grand, like ten grand. Wow. Took that ten grand, uh, started a carpet cleaning company, and started doing some stuff like that. Yeah. I look back a year later. Plug Power is at like a dollar and some change. Are you serious? So I was six, and so now her dad's calling me. My dad, they're like, man, baby boy, you a genius, man. My Plug Power stock is up. Da -da -da. Man, I know you're making a bunch of money. And I was like, man, I sold that shit. Right, I sold it. Then, like, a couple months later, went to $3. Later oh that year, God. this was 2013, later that year, it went to $10 a share. Shut. Oh, I my was God. sick. Now, mind you, now, today, this past year, Plug Power ran all the way up to, like, 70 bucks. So had I just held on to that, I mean, it would have been crazy money. But still today, even at Plug Power being, right now, it's at about $20-something. Um, I think it's going to be, like, the next Tesla. Like, you know, these guys... They basically are the Tesla for hydrogen fuel cells, mm. which is going to be a big part of clean energy going forward. So that's my favorite company so far to that's, invest in. Yeah. What was your biggest takeaway from that? Man, hold on. Like, you know, be patient. Yeah. Patience is like, is patience is the key when it comes to trading. Um, if you have a trading plan, you know what I mean? Stick to it. Don't get sidetracked. Now, mind you, you know, uh, it was a penny stock at the time. So, there was no telling that it was going to go to $10, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I believed in the company. You know, I wasn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't doing it to trade just to make money. I actually believed in that company 10 years ago. Yeah. And so, you know, you got to put your money in your mouth. If you do the research, you invest the time, mm -hmm. believe in that company. Um, but at the same time, take your profit where you can take your profit. 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I could, you know, I could have, that carpet cleaning company could have been my million dollar company. Who knows? Yeah. So, you know, it's all relative. Man, I think that's huge. And mm-hmm. so for people who are new, because when I think about cheat code, who is it for? Is it for the novice trader? Is it for the expert trader? Yep. How can people get involved and who is it for? We got all levels in our community. We literally have, um, you know, beginners. All, we specialize in taking beginners to, you know, advanced level. Uh, but once they get to advanced level in our community, we have all types of advanced traders. We actually teach stocks, forex, futures, and crypto, right? So futures trading is commodities trading, like corn. We show people how to how to make money from like gas prices um, going up. You can actually can trade oil, you can trade corn, mm. you can trade wheat. Everybody knows inflation is causing prices to rise. You can actually make a lot of money trading those commodities. So we teach the, uh, all those type of things. Um, and so... We it's we got everybody, man. I mean, we got people mm. seventy years old in our community. We got seven, one of our best traders is actually like seventy. She's a seventy year old woman who she started with us from the EYL interview. Wow. She's actually she kills it. Um, and then we got you know obviously younger crowd. Uh, but overall, the the point is you got to be willing to learn, right? That's what we specialize in. We specialize in people who are willing and want to learn. We'll give you the information. We'll provide the information. We'll provide the resources. We'll provide mm-hmm. the team. We have 12 instructors, coaches who are there around the clock, literally two in the morning. We got live trading happening in Forex and Futures. We got um, live trading happening, you know, 930 to 4 p.m. right now. They're actually trading live on the floor right now. They will help you no matter what your question is. Uh, but you got to be willing to learn. You don't mm-hmm. just expect to get hand out, you know, just tell me what to buy. And I'm just, you know, <laughs> those type of people, y'all can stay on that side. Like, we don't, you know, but people who are really trying to get the information and be and change their lives in that way, that's mm-hmm. the people that we specialize in. What are some of, outside of outside of the cheat code, what are some of the external factors that people need to be aware of as far as um, implementing that knowledge and, and understanding in their trading? Like, are we in a recession right now? Definitely. definitely we are? Definitely. I don't care what the... What the government try to they try to switch the definition up and all that type of stuff. We definitely in a recession right now, and it's only going to get. My concern is not recession. Recession isn't necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Right? Like just like the stock goes up and pulls back and goes up and pulls back, we have times where the, the economy needs to cool off. It's a mm-hmm. cycle. We're always going to go through those cycles. Mm-hmm. But the more scary thing is something called stagflation, and stagflation is when you have the cost of goods rising, mm-hmm. right, due to inflation. Um, but then you also have the dollar price that is actually going up. So the dollar actually goes up in value. Oh, I'm sorry. So you have inflation while you also have the cost of goods rising as well, right? So the dollar price is going down, which causes the price of goods rising. But then the actual intrinsic value of those cost of goods also rises. Um, and then you also have, like, unemployment numbers, all types of things go, mm-hmm. go bad. So... Not only is the value of your dollar going down, but also the assets that you know you hold are also getting more costly. Yeah. And that's a scary situation because your income isn't going up. Your income, you know, stays the same, but everything around you becomes much, much more, um, more difficult to. So what can you do not to panic? Um, what you, you gotta be, you gotta become what we call recession proof, man. I mean, shout out to my guy, him 500 for that one. You know what I'm saying? Shout recession proof. Marcus, you, gotta yeah. but, um, you gotta become recession proof in that the wealthy in this society, they are going to be good no matter what, right? It doesn't matter if the economy's up, down or sideways. Mm-hmm. So in order to prepare for it, you have to see the big picture. You have to pay attention to what's happening in the economy around you. Last year, it was very clear that at some point, interest rates were going to have to go up extensively, which was going to cause a pullback in the housing market and mm. a, you know, a potential recession. They had to deal with that because they printed so much money. You know, all them PPP loans, everybody was out there scraping up, right? Like, they had so much of that going on circulating. At some point, we had to pay the piper. Right. And so by paying attention to what's happening in the economy, you can position yourself properly and start preparing for those things. You know, when you know that there's a recession coming, come and stop spending money on things that are irrelevant. Mm. Start shoring up your skill set. Start making sure your credit is right. Making sure you're, you know, you have alternate alternate incomes outside of your t- traditional nine to five. Making sure that you have those type of things yeah. and just start preparing. Uh, making sure you have skill sets like trading. Because it doesn't matter if the market's up, down, or sideways. We can make money. Yep. We always can make money. We make money as the market. We actually make more money as the market's going down 
than we do when it's going up. Mm. Because, you know, something we t- call it taking the stairway up and the escalator and the elevator down. Because typically, you know, and stocks basically in the market works, greed is a, you know, more, fear is a more a strong emotion than greed, right? People are quicker to panic sell than they are to, you know, buy something to make money. Right. And so greed will cause the market to go up, you know, over time. But fear will cause the market to drop in a period of a couple of weeks or months or even days. Climate. And so if we position properly because we're paying attention and we take the right trade, we can actually make a lot more money on it going down. Like I said, my biggest biggest win was on Moderna crashing. Mm. It wasn't on Moderna going up. It was on Moderna crashing mm-hmm. because in one day that thing dropped like 20 something dollars. And so um, long story short, in order to prepare for those type of things, economies, make mm. sure that you are building the skill sets that are not contingent upon a good economy. You know, make sure you're not just worried about your job that you are dependent on. Because we all know in 2008, 2009, yep. we saw them jobs go real quick. Right. Uh, we saw them housing prices go real quick. That <laughs> equity got gone real quick. Yeah. So, you know, you got to have skill sets that you can depend on. I love that. Um, and before we get ready to close, obviously you guys have have implemented an amazing skill set creating cheat code. How smart do you have to be <laughs> to... Uh, to create something like this, it's not smart, man. It's not. It's not smart. It's just. Um, it's just being diligent, right? Like being diligent and and wanting to achieve something. Like I, I'm not. I was no smarter than any of the average trader out there when I, you know, when I was putting this stuff together. Like I just was like, look, I know that this is a strategy that I know works. I know that you know I've been in this space for a long time. I know what works. I know I've been I've taken the losses. Mm. You know, it's just learning from your losses, right? Like it's not about having innate genius or innate intelligence. It's just like yo, you gonna have losses. You gotta learn from. Stop repeating the same mistakes over and over again, and then take that those losses and build a system that will prevent you and others from making the same mistakes. Mm. And so um, the cheat code is just an accumulation of losses, man. My losses, other people's losses. I say, hey, last time I got burnt doing this, can we make something that, you know, can help me do that? Or I don't know where to take profit. Can we put something that shows us where to take profit? That's literally how we put that part into the cheat code. Somebody was like, yo, man, I don't know where to take profit. Mm. We put it in there. And so that's just all it is. And so um, it's just about being diligent. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Well, keep at it for people who also want to learn how to be diligent. Yeah. Through cheat code. Can you tell people how they can get plugged into what you guys are doing? Yeah, definitely. Uh, y'all can um, tap in with us on uh, Instagram at Cheatcode.tv um, is our Instagram page. My Instagram page is Quay.trades, K W A Y dot trades. Um, no underscores, hyphens, none of that type of stuff, no extra letters, because there are a lot of fake pages out there that will try to DM you. I will not DM you, ask you for nothing. So if you do follow either one of those pages, make sure y'all know that. Um, and then Cheatcode.com is, you know, is our website, so you can always tap in with us at Cheatcode.com. I love it. Okay, so before we go, you're Leo. Are you mean? Mean? Yeah, people say Leos are mean. No, no, I'm not mean. I got that I was I mean, mean for a long time. Really? No, I think it's just, you know, we're just being... Honest, maybe? Yeah, we'll just be honest, straightforward, I mean. I don't, I don't think we mean... Yeah, it's funny, because like, all the Leos, I mean, we've been real super chill. But I guess that is a Leo conversation <laughs> to have, right? We just love... <laughs> maybe so, because I'm kind of chill, too, but, like, people are like, I don't know. They are like, oh, I can't believe you just said that, or why did you just say that? Like, I would, yeah. never, I would never tell that to somebody else. But yeah, I just thought I would ask you that fun Leo question. Nah. <laughs> um, Quay, thank you so much again sure, for coming yeah. on the show, talking to me. I have to, before I officially wrap, finding your niche with niche, right? Mm-hmm. You're in a p- particular niche where it's created an environment, opportunities for you to essentially do any niche. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why specifically investing as your route? Um. Because I believe anybody can invest. I mean, everybody should invest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody should invest. You might not be an entrepreneur, right? You might not be able to run a business, but everybody should have some type of investments mm-hmm. out there. So um, for me, I mean, that's just the biggest thing. Honestly, entrepreneurialism is my first passion and investing is, you know, my second. And, and I guess I'll leave with this is, you know, I think that there's three steps to, to really generating wealth and solidifying wealth for your family and for yourself. Um, number one is generating the income um, through nine to five, through side hustles or through entrepreneurship. You just need to generate an income that outpaces your expenses, right? The, the more valuable your your skill set, the higher that income will be. So first thing is generating income. Um, 
And second thing would be multiplying that income through investing or other uh, skill sets like real estate, like stock trading, like crypto trading, whatever the mm -hmm. skill set that you choose to multiply your income through. Okay. And then third would be protecting that income through uh, asset protection things like trust funds, um, making sure your credit is right, personal finance strategies, things of that nature, making sure those things are locked in, life insurance, right? So, you know, generate the income, multiply the income, protect the income. That's just basically it. So I do uh, entrepreneurship. I, I multiply it through trading and investing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I protect it through, you know, like I said, life insurance, trust funds, things like that. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so generate, multiply, protect. and protect. Yeah. And watch this and podcast. Watch this podcast. One of two. Cheat code, finding your niche with niche.